that's going to recessive trait. Thanks. So MEFV gene has 10 exons. Remember I showed you the exons, the coding regions. It has 10 exons. And it goes to, uh, when it's protein, this is the structure. And let's say for exon 2 at 148, there's a mutation. And I'll show you the other mutations. So this is how we look at it. 10 exons, and we see the mutations in different exons. Next slide. Here is uh, from, a, from Isabelle Tattoo, is a French scientist, very lovely lady. And uh, so she designed this uh, and showed all the mutations here that can cause. You can see that exon 10, for some reason, has a lot of it. Now, exon 2 has 2, 3, 5, but since 5 has 1, it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that if you, don't, if you have that one, it's less. So pretty much all these mutations here can cause the, uh, the condition. Next one. Here is the DNA code for this gene. And I have put them in different colors, so you can see exon 1 black, exon 2 is blue, and then 3 black, and so on and so forth. And you can see the 10 here is the biggest one, which has all the mutations. Next one. So this is the assay that they buy in Armenia from Vienna. It's called Vienna Assay. It's an Austrian company which makes this. It's a very simple assay. You don't see the sequence. All you do is hybridize it to this piece and you see all those mutations that you can see, about 12 mutations. Now, what we saw is about 27, so they do about 12 of them. So what I did, I got the samples and I got some of it from here. I, there was a lab who was doing this sequencing. Uh, I was doing it for them in Glendale. So we, we were able to get the sequences and try to compare them, see how, what a good job they did. And they did an excellent job. They found almost every mutation that is available here in Armenia, except that with this you only get 12 of them. They had no other choice or no other tool of finding the rest of it. Next slide. Here is what we do here. We completely sequence the gene. Now, um, we did this uh, while that laboratory had the setup. I convinced them to set up and I promised them that you will make a lot of money because we will get a lot of clients and unfortunately uh, our physicians did not really, uh, I don't know what happened, but they were not that excited about this testing and they didn't send too many patients to this laboratory and after a year they told me that they want to stop because it's not cost effective for them. So, and this was in Glenda, which every eight, one out of eight Armenian is a carrier and one out of 15 is affected person. And so imagine, uh, this should have been a good business, but it didn't pick up because physicians, for some reason, didn't like this test. Let's move to this. So here is different mutations, and you can see here is the normal variant. <coughs> if they are heterozygous, so these are the terms that you have to get familiar because the rest of the, uh, this uh, presentation is, I'm going to use a lot of this, heterozygous and homozygous. So, Normal is normal, no problem. Heterozygous is one copy is mutated, the other copy is normal. And homozygous means both copies are affected. So these are the terminology. Heterozygous, by definition, should not really get the FMF because they have one healthy copy which will create the protein. But that's what we showed that's not the case. Uh, next one. So let's talk about the protein product, which does the work. Now you can see the 20-letter alphabet here. And uh, you can see the red ones are the ones that are mutated. And we look for those red ones, of course not in the protein sequence, we look in the DNA sequence and then we translate it uh, to a computer to this. So these are the different sequences that we look. And you can see again, exon 10 has the most. And this region in exon 10 is called the mutation hotspot. For some reason, most of the mutations occur here. And nobody knows, and that's what uh, I'm working on, uh, so hopefully we'll be able to find it uh, through bioinformatics and not any wet lab, because I don't have a laboratory, research laboratory. Next one. So here's the inflammation pathway. Uh, I wanted just to show you how it works. Injury, shock, uh, infection can cause inflammation in our body. Now, injury doesn't have to be a gunshot. You work out hard, that's an injury to the muscle. Uh, and I found through going through all the, the chart of the patients from Armenia, that stress is a very, very uh, potent cause of inflammation in the body. Uh, don't ask me why, because I don't know, but stress really causes the attacks of the FMF. 
the stress, yes. the reason that happens is the cortisol. The cortisol is causes the massive inflammation. But cortisol is just, uh, it suppresses the immune system. It really is not connected to the inflammation path. Inflammation has to have a physical, uh, that's what the typical inflammation is called. It has to have a, a, a physical uh, cause. Next slide. So here is our pyrene protein. Pyrene is the product MEFE, it's causing the protein that causes the FMF. So what pyrene does, cryopyrene and caspases create the inflammation. Pyrene controls it. Now, if we have mutation and the pyrene cannot control this inflammation, it keeps on going and creates all those symptoms for us. Next slide. And this is a little more complicated here because it gets the interleukin one and you can see pyrene <coughs> over there. It's blocking the caspase system, so it blocks the inflammation. It's a negative feedback. It's like a thermostat. Too much of inflammation stopping. That's what it does. Next slide. And the negative sign means pyrene stops it, cryopyrene starts it, and so this is the control mechanism. Now, if, we have, if our pyrene is mutated and cannot do the work, that's what we get the FMF. Next one. So here is the three domains. Proteins have domains, functional domains that the lock and key theory, if you remember from chemistry, that's where they do the work. So, these are the functional domains, but then again, you can see that there are mutations which are outside the functional domains. So what do they do? Why would they cause FMF? They're not in the functional areas, but they somehow affect it and we don't know. That's what we're working on to find out. And those are the three different interaction uh, domains. Let's move on. Okay. And now, this was one of the animations that unfortunately is not working. So it's not a trivial task to see because different exons, different mutations, and different domains. Now, as much as I try to be able to figure out a pattern here, it's just impossible. It's not working, at least now. We're working, uh, Nara and I are working on a different uh, set of bioinformatics work to start to um, be able to figure out what the patterns are here so we can actually publish that. Next. So let's look at what, what happens in the world. Now, I told you that this, this is a founder mutation, which means it happens thousands of years ago, before anybody knew who Armenian is, who Jews are. And then the population, in a small population in the Mediterranean area, they started spreading out towards everywhere in the Mediterranean region, and that's what stayed in the population. So here you can see the European, Italians, French, Greeks, and Spanish. And they, you can see, have different mutation pattern. Although these numbers, like 16, 42, significant, are not statistically very significant, still, they show that they have different patterns of mutation. So, environment actually selected for some mutation for some people, or when they dispersed along Mediterranean, different mutations in different people went to a certain population. So, those are the two theories that we can think of. Next one. 